Hey, you guys! We got another NES abridged and another game with a protagonist named Mike who uses a yo-yo as his primary weapon. This is The Goonies 2, which is loosely based on the 1985 movie The Goonies, which is based on a story written by Steven Spielberg. Konami developed and published The Goonies 2, and it was released in North America in 1987. You may be wondering, The Goonies 2? Where's the first game? Is the game supposed to be a sequel to the movie? There was, in fact, a first Goonies game released for the Famicom in 1986 in Japan and was later re-released for the Famicom Disk System in 1988. The first Goonies game never saw a North American release, but there was an arcade port titled VS The Goonies available to play on PlayChoice 10 machines in the arcade. Man, I miss going to the arcade. There was just something magical about them. All the flashing lights, the overlapping music from all these different games, kids running all over the place, turning in tickets to get crappy plastic prizes. Well, anyway, back to the review. The Goonies 2 is a Metroidvania style platformer where you'll have to guide Mikey through spooky attics, dry caves, wet caves, frozen caves, and caves where the floor is lava. Your goal is to rescue your six Goonie pals and finally rescue the mermaid Annie, you may be asking yourself, who is Annie? But I have a better question. Why is Annie? You press the A button to jump and the B button to attack with your yo-yo. Later in the game, you get a few more weapons like a slingshot and my personal favorite, the boomerang. You can throw the boomerang directionally while jumping, which was a game changer. It was also super fun trying to hit enemies at weird angles and making trick shots. Of course, we retro gamers can't have nice things. So Konami put an enemy in the game, which only appears in the bridge area and does does no damage to you whatsoever and its only purpose for existing is to steal your boomerang. Jerks. As you explore the Goonies 2, you'll find doors which you can enter by pressing up, and I just have to say, I want to make the door opening sound effect the text alert for my phone if I could figure out how because it's so dang good. When you enter one of these doors, you'll find yourself in a kind of 3D view where you can navigate around using the D-pad. These areas can be perplexing since your character is sometimes facing the opposite direction than you're accustomed to, which is indicated by your character in the bottom left of the screen. If you're not careful, you might end up going through a door behind you because you pressed up and your character is facing down. Confusing, right? These areas also contain lots of hidden exits and safes which you can reveal by hitting them with your fists or hitting them with your hammer or by putting on your glasses. Some hidden items are only revealed by punching the wall with your fist while others are only revealed by hitting the wall with your hammer. I have to say that The Goonies 2 is the most advanced wall punching simulator I've ever played since every single room I walked into I found myself punching every wall, floor, and ceiling then swapping to the hammer to repeat the process. Just imagine if some kid exhibited this type of behavior in real life, just punching every wall, hammering away on the floors and ceilings in every single room he walked into. Mikey should be in an insane asylum. As I stated earlier, The Goonies 2 is a Metroidvania style game and you'll need to find items like the spring shoes, which improves your jump, and the ladder, which allows you to climb through holes you reveal in the floors and ceilings. You don't have to collect every single item in the game to make it to the end, however, as I personally never collected the candle and still managed to beat the game. There are other items like the football helmet, which seems to only stop you from taking damage from falling icicles, which, in my opinion, were never much of a threat to begin with. As you collect more and more items, you'll be able to access different areas of the map, which is separated into two parts, the front and the back. Despite having its own in-game map in the pause screen, you'll likely want to bust out a number two pencil and some graph paper so you can make your own, something I regret not doing. Navigating through the Goonies 2 is not a straightforward affair, and for little old mapless me, often led to an hour or so of going in circles, exploring the same rooms repeatedly as I desperately tried to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Thankfully, the Goonies 2 features an unnecessarily long path password system, so if you get frustrated, you have the option to take a break and come back later. Just a really quick side note, the music in The Goonies 2 is pretty darn good, especially the 8-bit cover of the Cyndi Lauper song, The Goonies Are Good Enough.
At the end of the day, I enjoyed my time with the Goonies too, but I freely admit that it's definitely not for everyone. If you don't like the idea of getting completely lost and spending a lot of time getting yourself unlost, then the Goonies 2 probably isn't the game for you. As for me, I kinda like just exploring and fumbling my way around, punching every wall in existence, occasionally uncovering a new item that will help me progress in some other part of the map I can't even remember how to get to, so I give the Goonies 2 an ambiguous 3 out of 5. You don't have to collect every single... Especially in the 8-bit cover of the Cindy Lauper song, The Goody... The Goodies. The Goodies are Goodies enough. <laughs> <laughs>